Evil City. I have seen the end of days. And years from now, men will say, here began the fall of Rome. was taken from the many and given to the few. Those who wore the golden wreath grew sick with every kind of wickedness. They were filled with greed, deceit, and malice. They condemned and enslaved friends and murdered those they loved. They did all this and called it just. And I saw in his hand a book sealed with seven seals, the first of which was broken. And he that sat on him had a bow, and he went forth to conquer. filled with smoke and blood indeed unite the clans back in your life geeks and stoked to be back in your life right now because i am bringing you a brand new game bringing a new game to the channel at least total war attila i have been playing this game like crazy since it came out in the middle of february but uh, i didn't want to bring it uh to my channel until i was able to do it uh with high quality graphics so this is currently recording 1080p 60 frames per second on the highest settings now this is just the menu uh, but I have just done open motherboard surgery on my machine to uh, insert a brand new WinForce 3x GTX 970 from Gigabyte uh, and it has <laughs> change the way this game looks big time anyway the point is this game has been using up tons of my time and i'm glad that now i can finally bring it to you and me playing it isn't just a waste of time that's keeping videos off my channel uh, so let's have a look at the grand campaign and i promise you this is what we are going to be doing all right guys uh, i hope i don't get too much hate for this but i'm going to be playing as one of the celtic tribes this uh these three tribes, the Abdanians, Picts, and Caledonians, were just released and were released as part of a DLC. Now the real hardcore Total War fans are a little pissed because the game launched with ten, uh, ten factions uh, and there are now nine available through DLC, uh, so they consider that kind of maybe cut content because the game's only been out for five, six weeks uh, and are a little annoyed at how much uh, they've had to pay. Me. The game launched with 10 factions, that's plenty. This is the first Total War game I've ever really got into, so that that's plenty for me. And then once you've released like that, why wait to bring out the additional content? Then Norseman here came out uh, with pre-order, so we're released on the same day as a DLC if you didn't pre-order. 
Uh, then we had uh, some new Germanic uh, kingdoms, the Langobards, Alamans, and uh, Burgundians. Uh, and now we have three Celtic factions. So you've got the Abdanians who inhabit Ireland. Uh, they are raiders, sackers, looters, uh, and uh, you've got the Caledonians who are looking very Highlander right here with that tartan. I'm not sure how historically accurate that is, but they inhabit the lowlands of Scotland. Uh, basically anything between Hadrian's Wall here and the Firth of Forth up here. Uh, and we are going to be playing as the Picts. So our capital is Tuasis, and we inhabit the true highlands of Scotland. We'll be playing on normal. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give you a little tour of this. Uh, so your faction leader here, uh, Andy, I'm pretty good at pronunciations, but I'm not even going to attempt this one. Our religion, like the other uh, the other Celts, is Celtic paganism. We also share the cultural tra trait of swift spoils. This makes us much more efficient raiders and gives us guerrilla deployment, uh, which means we can deploy anywhere uh, on, in a battle outside of the enemy's deployment zone can line up behind them depending on the battlefield uh, and we also have the unique faction trait of children of the night uh, this gives us uh, night battles at land and at sea which is something you know you typically have to go uh, earn by leveling up a general's uh, cunning um, we get it immediately and not only do we get it but we get a massive plus nine morale bonus uh, when we're fighting at night so I promise you we will be doing lots of that uh, and this is our leader here, uh, Andy, with a crazy pagan owl wing helmet and uh, some, you know, kind of Pictish blue tattoos here. And he is deeply in love with this axe, deeply. So I'm going to click start campaign and uh, you guys will get a cool cinematic. Uh, if you haven't been playing Total War Attila, it's brand new to you. Let's give it a go. The air was filled with smoke and blood. Rome was weak. The tribes grew in strength and number. Their roots went deep, and they felt the earth's blood pounding through the land. Their borders were threatened, for a great storm raged in the east. One by one, the tribes scattered as seeds in the wind. And behold, a red horse, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Blood of their kin would be avenged. Great hunters, they tempered their blades in Roman blood and saw their once mighty walls reduced to dust. Oh yeah. Sorry. They made ready for war. <laughs> and now we make ready for war. We get one more faction-specific intro here, guys. You represent the last bastion of Pictish culture in Britannia. The Romans masters of so much of the island sought to cage you like dogs in the frozen north but in so doing have sowed the seeds of their own downfall the years of isolation and hardship have made your people savage now they strain at the leash in their eagerness to feast on the dying empire beyond hadrian's wall the ebdanians across the water share your fervor and should flock to your banner the neighboring Caledonians, however, broken by years of war, may require galvanizing into action. United, 
You can descend upon the south in a storm of fire and slaughter. Make ready for war. Check it out, guys. This is uh, our first objective. Survive five years until spring 400. So that, I believe, is about 20 turns. Uh, each turn is a season, and we get a big boost to our treasury. We also got some sweet uh, additional objectives here. Number one, research Nordic shipbuilding techniques. Uh, so under technology, I believe that is this one. Yeah, so we might as well set that up uh, right now. Uh, I will try to avoid doing a Scottish accent. Uh, we also got sack or loot three settlements. Sacking, uh, you basically hit it, take the money and run, and you don't have to deal with the consequences. Looting is part of loot and occupy. So you take the money, uh, but then you become a lords of that settlement, and uh, you need to... Uh, deal with the consequences so ideally maybe we'll save that for when we fight the Romans and not have to do that to our, our fellow Celtic brothers uh, extortion racket receive 500 in diplomatic tribute from the Western Roman Empire I'm not quite sure how to do that but uniting the north and maybe taking uh, a Boracum down here uh, to this spot here might be the way to go uh, what's that around modern-day York I don't know and I, I might be crazy. Is this the Firth of Forth? I think it is. Um, okay. And then be at war with the Caledonians, our neighbors to the south, right here. Pretty sure we could hit them turn one if we want to. Uh, now, ideally, I'd like to take over the Abdanians down here too, but uh, we're kind of friendly with them, so I'm not sure. And then um, hold the following settlement, which we're at war with the Caledonians. Hopefully we eventually hold the Isle Dawn here. Uh, and these are our mini objectives for chapter one. We also have grand campaign objectives. I'm not going to worry about those for now, guys. I think uh, my game plan uh, for this Let's Play series is to unite Britain. I'm not sure how long that'll take. Uh, maybe 8, 10, 12, 15 episodes. Uh, and then we'll see where we stand uh after that, see if we want to continue this thing. So no commitments for a massive grand campaign with, what do you call it, a divine triumph. Not sure about that yet. Not even sure about minor victory. Although that, that seems fairly doable. But uh, we, will, uh, we will see, guys. Uh, so let's uh, get this started. I'd rather get just to the action. So before we do, though, let's have a quick look at our family tree. We've got Andy here. He is the faction uh, ruler, the High King. He's got a wife, and uh, in my, I did a little like initial playthrough. She was pretty terrible, but she's pretty good this turn. Uh, this time, she builds up a lot of her own uh, personal influence and gives her husband authority. Uh, which, if we look at the stats, he's got four of. Uh, that gives him additional uh, morale, public order. If he's a governor, uh, and he's got special abilities here, brace. Uh, which protects you from oncoming charges, uh, as well as the trait of marksman. So that means he should be leading a... Uh, so javelins, hurlers, archers, mounted uh, skirmishers. Uh, so we will see what we can do with him. Uh, he also has uh, his age here and his personal influence. Uh, influence is important. That uh, determines... Dominion is determined by our families combined influence versus the influence of these other nobles uh, and then we also have control this is determined by the success our political success basically how well we deal with certain situations uh, and these two uh, if balanced properly will keep you kind of dead center or close to dead center uh, on the power level you don't want to get too high because then you lose public order growth loyalty or too low because then you lose uh, integrity, more loyalty, and your tax rate is way down. Uh, we want to stay somewhere in the middle. Actually, this one looks pretty good. We'll see. Uh, so the idea, maybe stay right around here, 60, between 55 and 65 percent. So that is the game plan. Uh, Andy here has two sons. This one, I believe that yellow line means he was adopted. That is correct. Uh, so he was adopted. So he's not our heir even if he was older he wouldn't be our heir but we have two legitimate children by Vepia here we've got uh, Cam and Sira not gonna try like look at this guy dummy over here 
not going to deal with it. Uh, so let's have a look at what we've got militarily. So we've got, this looks like Andy, yep, with a decent sized force. Ready for and we've got Kasikos. You know what? I might, might do away with Kasikos and put in one of our sons. Who is the better warrior among the two? Second wind merchant. Now that would be a solid governor, I think. And let's see here. Dignitary tax rate. Oh, you'd also be a good governor. Uh, let's just force one of them to be a warrior. Let's protect our heir. Let's uh, let's make Sedge here a uh, a uh, general. So I'm gonna replace Casicos at the helm of the Heralds of Death here. Uh, boot you and replace you with who did I say? Sedge. Yep. Do what we gotta do. And simultaneously, let's name our other son here, Cam, as the heir. Uh, or not the heir, the governor of our, uh, of Tuasis up here. And, um, yeah, I'd say we're, we're ready to go. So, ready for battle. I'm curious if it would be a good idea to, uh, to go right at these guys. Well, let's, let's head north for a turn. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, build up our armies a little bit. Ready for orders. A couple of turns. I'm a big fan of these guys. They have shield wall, uh, which is good defensively. And I found these guys were pretty good when I hired them as mercenaries in my initial playthrough. Come so let's fight get... For us, lads. Are you ready as many to do of your these guys to the tribe? Get. Oh, only three. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's give it a turn, and we will go from there. Uh, I'm wondering, hopefully I've done enough. Let's have a look at diplomacy. Caledonians, uh, we are fairly neutral with them. The Abdanians were very friendly, and we are enemies of the Franks in the Western Roman Empire, but we are not at war as it stands now with anyone. Uh, the Abdanians not at war with anyone, and the Caledonians, I'm surprised no one's at war with Rome. Uh, I doubt that will last more than a turn, but we'll see what we can do here, guys. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's not do anything yet. We already have a non-aggression pact. I don't want to make any sort of non-aggression pact or even a trade pact with the Caledonians because we're planning on taking them out. So let's uh, let's uh, let's just advance a turn. So we've uh, nominated a governor here. It lets us uh, lets us issue an edict. I'm thinking we go with this one. This one gives us faster research and more experience for our units. So research, we're doing these two here. Uh, let's call this a turn. So keep your eye out for our uh, fellow Celts up here. Not sure where we come in this turn order. Man, that's blindingly fast. War declared Caledonians on the Western Roman Empire. Cool. We've issued this edict, and Casicos is ready for duty, meaning uh, he has come back from command and returned to the capital. Uh, so let's look. Did that uh, experience bonus apply to our new troops? It did not. Uh, yeah, we should have maybe waited a turn, but I don't want to miss an opportunity to build up this army. Uh, so we'll go we need good one, fighters. two, uh, maybe some more cav. Yeah, Are screw you it. Ready let's get to some cav in here. Okay, so that is another turn down. We are fortified here. Uh, the city has great public order. Celtic paganism is 97%. Our economy isn't looking tremendous. I'm wondering if it's worth it. Uh, it's going to take some saving up for. And this is, these are going to take some research. So I say we wait a turn. Food is food is good. Yeah. All right. Let's end this turn here. I do the toll with the overlong talk. So the Danians would like as an argument. So listen. Uh, to be and honest, then agree. that is a pretty terrible daughter. Her zeal, she takes away her husband's zeal, uh, and she's 
it's so horrible that men are inclined to cheat. Uh, I'm wondering if we can get more money for her, though. Yeah, of course we can. So let's go with uh, let's go with five fifty. All right, let us give that a go. Moderate. I'm not here to burden you with demands. Let's counter offer. My offer is what we See consider worthy of your people. There we go. Where have you put oh, your you won't take pride? that, eh? Listen, you Abanian son of a... I won't give away my daughter for less. Where do you think my principles lie? If I'm going to sell you my daughter, I'm going to do it for a good price. Disease outbreak. Oh, awesome. Uh, okay. So, disease outbreaks happen when your uh, squalor results in, in too low of... Uh, I forget what the term is. Sanitation, basically. Uh, I can't even see that now, can I? Consumption. Public order goes down and we make less wealth. Public order isn't really an issue for us right now, mainly because of that massive military presence. But uh, I feel like we'd be fine even if we moved the armies out. Uh, so speaking of, let's have a look at these. You know what? That's looking pretty good. I bring you out of this stance. And let's uh, let's bring in with some of our considerable wealth. Let's bring in some mercenaries to flesh out this force, and we're going straight at those Caledonian SOBs. Oh, there's only one available. That makes sense. So we've got room for three. I'd say we take that one uh, Onager catapult, basically, and maybe we take. You know what? Maybe we cancel that cav. Yeah, maybe we take you guys. One of you. And uh, one of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well that'll be our first line. We'll, we'll use those troops to the best of our ability. And then with you, I'd say we just buy everything else that we can get our hands on. I know it's going to bankrupt us here. Oh yeah, expensive as hell. So we better use these troops this turn. I should have made sure we can make it to Islegon. Ready for battle. So what do they got here? Is there nothing else? Ready for battle. Move out for the tribe. Where is the city? Am I crazy? Can is it invisible? Starting out. Oh, is that it? Is it just this little pile of huts? Uh, we have chosen to declare war. No one is on ah, their side. War, good. Sword bite, shield crash, and your screams on the morning air. More like your screams, homeboy. Let Let's do this thing. Us. Oh yeah. You know what? Do we even go with a night attack? If we do use a night attack, we only get to use... Oh no, I thought we only get to use half our forces. Yeah, it it really messes with us. Uh, I say we use both armies. Uh, let's let's just do this. Let's fight this, this thing. You guys have seen my channel art. It's me in a kilt with war paint. Of course, I want to play as the Celts. And of course, I'm going to unite us. So, I do. I'm going to wait. Let's get some clear weather. This is the first battle. I know we're fighting in spring, but what are you going to do? Come on. Rain. Jeez. I was trying to get some nice clear weather for you guys for the uh, first battle on the channel. But I guess that ain't going to happen. So, uh, there are two ways to attack the city. This way, you have to go past a lot of towers. Uh, this way, you have to not get past the tower and then avoid any skirmishers that are lined up against this wall. I mean, I guess, yeah, those are the only two real ways into the city. I, I say we come from this side. Um, 
Or maybe. Yeah, maybe we put. Take advantage of guerrilla deployment and put you guys right here. You have a range? Maybe we'll put you right here. To take out that tower. And everyone else, let's just uh, not take advantage of guerrilla deployment at all. So we'll go here with our first line. And we'll throw up that shield wall like a bounce. We've got our less useful infantry. You guys can do a spear wall? No, you can't. Any of you guys have special abilities? You might. Let's call you control two. We'll throw you up in here. Throw Andy back here. Uh, bows back here. Actually, you guys can probably be up here. Let's keep you entirely in those trees. Other skirmishers will go control five. Pardon me, guys, while I get myself all situated here. I'm wondering if it's going to be useful to put. Put these guys right here. And. Uh, well, let's, let's throw. What are you doing? Do as you please. Uh, if there is a trick for forming a group without it being locked, let me know, because that's a pain. So, and we'll go with Flaming Shot for you. Yeah, so I have to, every time I do Control 6 to form a group, I have to hit Control G so that I can sort of make their formation like, uh, if you see these guys, so I can make them, so I can sort of tweak their formation. Uh, so let's let's start like that. Were we yeah, we're fully within range. So let's maybe move you guys out. I was hoping that forest would provide some cover. That's grub there. But it definitely doesn't. Uh, and we have obviously another forest coming in. So let's get this thing started. So let's start with group seven, flaming shot, and let's destroy that tower. And let's take our skirmisher cav. We'll throw them in skirmish mode. Reinforcements enter the fray. Oh, that tower is hitting us pretty good. We'll kill them all. Spread out. Oh, this is harder than it looks. Well, luckily, they're just kind of staying put. Maybe we, uh... So I've got my guys in skirmish mode. That way they're avoiding this chaos a little bit. All I need my Onager to do... Screw it. Let's move up these, these cheap troops. These Onager, this Onager is not going to do it in time, is it? You need one good hit. One good hit. Our ambush troops have been detected. Yeah, those Onagers are. You got one last shot. Do it. Do it. Oh, we've got this. Jeez, this one unit is chasing us down like crazy. Stop and fight. Oh, 
Oh, I can't believe that unit is still in. If you can. Oh no. Have you abandoned? What are you doing? If I can control you. Yeah, fire. So we're in shield wall here, so we're in pretty safe position. The men have thrown down their weapons and are fleeing. Alright, let's uh let's pause the action. I don't like to do that, but we got troops coming in all the way over here. Where are you? Where are you at? On the other side of the battlefield. So I say we bring them up like this. Yeah, good call. And let's run them. And then uh, with these bows, let's pick, start picking off these horses. And we'll switch to flaming shot. Uh, I want to get these axes. Where are you? And the rest of this unit can kind of form up. And let's stop getting chased off and let's just... Uh, skirmish mode and take out those spears is that that is a commander wonder if we should throw more at it all right well let's just let's just unpause beautiful you f you should not have charged me all right now we'll fire on that so we don't destroy our own men throw the general in there I should have used that command earlier. That's a tough one to use. Let's chase down these spears. Enemy units have been rallied. Ah, I am sorry. Oh, I am attention deficit disorder here. I'm all over the place. So these guys are broken, but they have not routed. We need that little white flag like this. So now that those guys are, let's move you up. So they've basically sallied out. I think they've brought their entire force against us here. How are these guys still going? Break that shield wall and charge these guys. This tower is still killing us. I didn't realize that it is probably doing way too much damage. It's okay, we'll we'll get there soon. Let's use one unit of, uh, of mercenaries here to chase them off. We'll use this other unit to just collapse in here. You guys need to be hustling to get this tower burnt down here. Why are you stopped? Oh, because they're engaging you. Uh, luckily, these are mercenaries. Where's my other mercenary here? Uh, I'd say you chase after two. Let 
What are my horses doing? General has fallen. Our victory grows ever nearer. The men are running. Stand and fight, damn you. Praise the God. All right, and we didn't even have to enter the city. Oh, the groin kick. Tremendous. So that is both of their armies. Not a single man left. Normally, you get an option here to, you know, kill off the captives uh, or sell them off or in integrate them into your force. Uh, and we didn't get that. We obviously just obliterated them. So here's the tough question, guys. Occupy. Uh, it gives the same uh, conquest penalty, which only lasts a couple of turns. Uh, it gives a lot less provincial instability, and it gives us additional unit replenishment. Uh, it's really down to these two. Raising it burns it to the ground. Uh, sacking it leaves the Celts up and running. Subjugating it uh, makes them our, our sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, puppet state, basically. Do we need the money? I don't think we need the money let's uh let's get our, our looting and, and sacking done later down the road uh i say we just occupy Is yeah let's do it so we have killed devico high king of the caledonians and i believe oh i was gonna say i believe that wipes their tribe from the face of the earth but i guess they have a second army right there were two armies one was the garrison one was the uh the army. Okay. So Devico is dead. So here's what remains. The men of the hunt under Preto, the new high king. Uh, I'm going to see how the Caledonians feel about us. It's pretty bad. They wouldn't accept Do not a peace treaty, I don't think. Truth with honey. Speak plainly, and I will hmm. deal honestly. Oh, my people, so the Caledonians have accepted our peace treaty mainly me. <laughs> shut up Preto mainly I'm guessing it's because they admire strong empires and if I know anything it's that I am incredibly powerful so hopefully the Abdanians I can check actually I can see how the Caledonians feel uh, how do I get out of this right so I can see how the Abdanians like the Caledonians. The Caledonians like the Abdanians. I mean, they're not happy with me, but it's improving. Uh, and we now have a peace treaty, and I occupy their home. So I say, uh, I say that was worth it. Uh, let's, uh, let's have a quick look at our forces here. We really need to lower the cost, otherwise we're going to lose a lot of money next turn. So you're done. Uh, this onager, we can we can recall it if we need it. Uh, where where's my army all. here? Yeah, a lot. Considering these guys didn't even get into the battle, that was 
kind of a tremendous waste. Uh, I might even combine my forces here. Actually, I may disband your whole army. All right, with that, with that thought, then I'm going to take your spears and give you a couple of these, and we'll see how we do. Oh, I need to give you more. Is that right? Uh, I'll give you her. There we go. And you can disband this unit, and we'll see if we keep you. You know what? Let's just. Yeah, the Heralds of Death. We will bring them back when the time has come. But, uh, High King Andy here. So we're going to try uh, to combine our forces here. Because we're not getting a big bonus to unit replenishment. So disband you. Yeah. All right, things looking pretty good, I think, here. Uh, that's a pretty big army, but we're going to make some decent... You know what? I'm going to get rid of these. I don't like them. I don't want them. Uh, especially compared to these Celtic Woodrunners. Just not a fan at all of these. Disband ya. So we've got a 15 stack army. Room for mercenaries. Room for recruitment when the time comes. And, uh, uh, and room for some artillery. Guys, thank you for watching. I'm United the Clans, and I will check you guys out in the next episode.